Yeah, YouTubers, Taz man here bringing you another episode of Foundry Virtual Tabletop from the ground up. And in our last episode, and last last episode, <laughs> last two episodes, we've been working on writing a macro that will give us the ability to roll initiative with advantage or disadvantage, I guess, if you really wanted. We could work some code in there to pop up something. But right now, all I care about is making it roll with advantage. So, so far, what we've been able to do is we've been able to detect that we're only selecting a single token, not multiple tokens, not no token. Um, we have made it so we can detect whether an actual encounter is running, if there's one available. If there's not, then we don't do anything. So right now, you get no activity, and we click it. Oh, whoop, we don't have our token selected. If we run it, you'll see nothing happens because we don't care if if you click this if there's no encounter why roll initiative there's no reason to so this will make us so you know when you're actually in an encounter it will let you roll initiative so if we go create an, an encounter if we go clear this now we'll see that we will get our console logs all lined up and ready to go for us so now boom there we go we have our my token we have our roll data and we have our combat info so we can go look at the different combat info the info info <laughs> and so on and so forth so now i think we are to the stage where where we would want to to uh actually make our roll and decide uh, which one is the better role so this is going to be uh, I think it's it's not gonna be too bad all right so first off uh, what we want to do now is we we've got all that information what we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to figure out what our dex is uh, and that's not that's not that would be your dex itself, your dex value, not your dex modifier, so that we can have the dot whatever number. In this case, I believe we set it to 13, right? Because, or 15. So dot 15 would be our, our dex tiebreaker, I guess is the best way. Uh, so we wanna find out what that is. So uh, let's go add that in here so we have just a little game plan. So we've here made sure we have a single token, that there is a combat. Then because we know we're going to be doing stuff, we're getting our information that we need so we can pass the console log. Like I said, these console logs, you probably want to comment out because when you're actually playing the game, you probably won't have the console open. No reason for it to do any additional processing to pull that information up and and put it into a little thing, even though it's really fast. Um, so let's do the my decks part first. So if we go look at our roll data, right, we can come into our roll data and I believe it's under abilities. And here's our decks, right? So we have decks and then we have value, which is the 15. So we want that. And then to get it so that it's a decimal, we want to multiply that by uh, 0 0.01. And that should make it so it's 0.15 when we output that, right? So let's go ahead and do that first. So we know where it is now. We know it's in my roll data and we've actually saved my roll data to my data. So we can say let, and we will say, uh, my decks maybe i don't know why i always do my helps me know that it's it's one that i set up so let's do my decks and we'll do equals and we're going to just do the 0 0.01 and we're going to multiply that by that value that we just talked about right by the way we have an i here because i didn't do that uh so we want to go uh to uh da -da. so we will do uh, my data my data dot and abilities a b i l i t i e s dot let's see so abilities dot dex 
dot value, right? Dot dex dot value. And that's it. This should now set this, my dex. So if we do console log here of my dex and say C O N S O L E dot log um, and say tiebreaker maybe T I E B R E A K E R colon space. And we could just set this to my dex. So comma my uh, dex. All right, so if we run this now, we should get a 0 0.05 as our, our last value in there. So we have them selected, we run that, and there we go. So our tiebreaker is point, uh, point zero 0.05, I mean point 0.15, which is correct because his dex value is 15. Now this is nice because it's going to anyone, you know, if later on I go increase this, if we statically set that for the character and then we get an attribute increase and we go to 17, for example, which is going to be our plus three. Uh, if we close this and run this again, you'll see it automatically is detecting that on the fly. So, uh, we, we don't want to set any kind of static value in there saying, well, yeah, my, my value is this right now because later on uh, it will not be that. So we definitely want to do that. All right, so now that we have that, the next thing we probably want to do is also get your initiative value, uh, what your initial, initiative modifier is, right? So let's go look at that real quick. Let's go back to roll data. Um, I believe that is under, is that attributes? I think it's under attributes, initiative, and mod right there. So let's go ahead and set that one. Uh, so here, let's go ahead. And we don't, I don't care about this console log at all. It's, it's very, it's just for our testing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put a comment here and say, uh, set a uh, tiebreaker value, maybe. Tiebreaker. And then underneath that, let's go ahead and do another one. And we will say set a variable, V A R I A V A variable for. I N I T A T I V E. Is that right? Initiative mod. That doesn't look right. At modif M O D I F I E R. Yeah, I think that's right. There's actually a spell checking mod. I really should have that one in here. <laughs> Maybe in the next one, I'll have that already installed. Um, so here we're going to say let, uh, we'll just call this my init, because why not, equals, and now we want to do this. So we want to do my data dot uh, attributes, A-T-T-R-I-B-U-T-E-S uh, dot init dot mod and that should set our value of plus I think the last time we said it plus three right yep plus three I'm just wondering if we ever set a bonus to that huh That's something we could set later on. I mean, what we could do is um, if we wanted to also add our bonus in there, if there was a bonus, we just copy this part right here, do control C. And we've already got this, this is already defined, so we don't need let anymore. But we could say my init plus equals, which is say, my init plus my init equals and then do the same thing but instead of mod do bonus now i did not do that on my friends thing 
But this would mean that if there was a bonus, if it's zero, which is its default value, so as long as this has got a default value, if it were if her default uh, value of like undefined or null or something like that, that might cause issues. <coughs> but because it gives it a default value of zero, uh, I think we're fine. So what this will do is say my whoops, that is not right at all. This would say my init plus my init equals my data attributes int bonus. So it will actually take the value here and then add in this other part right here. So I think that that would cover that. But like I said, I didn't actually do that in my friends. We could also right here do the exact same, do a plus uh, and then put this chunk behind it but I don't like it going off the screen. I like to keep everything nice and kind of short. <coughs> so do it however you, however you prefer. All right, so now that we've done that, we should have all our values that we need to actually make our role. So how do I want to do this? So we're going to do, let's do let my role because <laughs> we're, we're in a theme here you can call it whatever you want as long as it doesn't start with a number or a symbol um, with the exception I think of an underscore but usually that's reserved uh, so we're gonna say my role equals and now we're going to access a new function or we're gonna create a new object of uh, and pass it some information so basically this is a class. So we're gonna say a new and role, right? So this is our class of role and it has a constructor that's looking for various things. So the first thing we're gonna to do to it is we're gonna give it our formula and we wanna add in the my init, which is our decimal value. And we also wanna add in our my dex to our role. Um, and my dex is that tiebreaker. So I'm going to do it in that very order. We're going to use our little ticks here. Uh, I don't know what those things are called. I'm going to call them ticks instead of the single quote. I think that's good. But uh, if you don't know, that's the one that shares the key with the tilde, uh, just above the tab key on your keyboard. If it's if you're using a US keyboard, I guess. I don't know where it is on other ones. So this will be our formula. So we want to roll 2d20. And we want to add in our modifiers, right? So we want to add in, and because it's a, a variable we're using, we're going to say plus, and let's go ahead and do my init first, my i and it. And then we're going to say outside of that, we're going to also say plus because we want to add another thing in here, and it's going to be the string uh, my dex. Now, if your table, if you're the GM and you don't use the tiebreaker, all you have to do is comment out where we're setting my decks and then just get rid of this part. Uh, then it won't, it won't show that. I don't know why you would do that because I think it's very handy. Now, also we have the, I believe if I'm understanding the terminology, this would basically be a function within there that we want to call, which is role. And this is, I believe this is new to, uh, new to version, oh, whoops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> uh, we want to add in, I think it's with the ticks. I, I just wrote out this chunk of code and I think, I think it's these right and then we want to say async a s y n c so this is new to version 9 and then we're going to do colon and we're going to type false so this will roll our die and set whatever the role is to my role 
Now, let's have it, this is, we're gonna create a, another console log so we can see what that role information is because that's gonna be handy for us. Um, let's go ahead and add a comment here because yeah, it's easy to forget those. Um, roll the die and set the uh, hmm, set the object to a variable. I don't know something along those lines. Just gives an idea of what this chunk of code is doing. Um, so let's do C O N S O L E uh, dot log, and go ahead. We will call this. Um, I guess just roll, roll results or something. <laughs> roll R E S U L T S and a colon and boom and that and that okay so we have roll results and we will do this as roll because right now it's only a single object it's its own little thing it, it's not part of canvas blah 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 it's its own little oh my roll sorry my roll all right go ahead and do semicolon there and a semicolon there and apparently a Wait, what's this one saying? Leading decimal point can be confused. We could just do a zero then. There we go. All right, so now if we go hit save macro, we have a guy selected. Now if we do this, we get an error. Wait, let's double check. Did we get an error? We got an error. So unpromised reference error, false. Oh, you have to spell false right. You guys probably caught that. I didn't. Uh, okay, so we need FAL. So if you if this async, its default state I believe is true. If you don't have a set of faults, you'll get this uncaught uh, this this uh, uncaught promise in promise. If you set it to false, then it will actually finalize it, I guess, because. Uh, it will do the rolling stuff, but it, I, I don't know how to describe it. It actually puts it as a, oh, what would I call it? A temporary variable or a ghost variable. The data is there, but you can't actually access it until it's been finalized. It's actually been set as the variable. Um, yeah, I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> But I found that if it says in promise, it's because it hasn't actually solidified that data or something. So now if I do that, uh, we're still getting console. I need to spell console right as well. All right. Uh, C-O-N. Console log. Okay and clear that again and there we go so now if we go in here we can see that here's our formula uh, we have do 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 maybe I need to make this a little bigger there we go so we can see the plus 17 so if we go look we can see we we're rolling 2d20 plus 3 which is our initiative pl uh, plus 0.17 which is our dex tiebreaker. So that's perfect. It looks like it rolled a 23.7. Is that right? We rolled a nat 20? Nice. If we go into, I think it's the dice here, we can actually see the rolls. Is it dice? That's the formula total result and total and then dice i think this is the one i wanted so here we have our die roll i believe uh, which was a nat 20 and where's the other one it would be uh let me think for a second where 
I think result. Oh, result was a. Uh, where was result? Result down here under die. So we have our die right here. Result uh, is right here, and there's two of them. That's what I wanted. So here you can see we rolled. It looks. Uh, oh, actually, we rolled an 18 and a 2, I guess. Oh, it's a faces 20. Wait, where was I getting that 20 from? Total 20. I'm not exactly sure. So um, we're going to first actually do uh, where we're going to custom make a custom card because I think that's kind of cool and I think it might be a fun, handy thing for you to learn. But there's a much easier way to do it. In fact, well, actually, maybe I'll just show you the easy way first. Uh, but it has less control. So this will be basically as if you rolled it yourself um, or if you click the init and it actually outputs it. So let's do that one first. We're at 21 minutes, dang it. So uh, what we would want to do is, uh, let's go ahead and create a comment, say easy uh, roll result output to chat so this is less customized i just want to show you the other way as well just so you can get an idea of how you actually send something to chat uh, so let's go ahead and uh, do this so for this we're going to do roll to message and then uh, inside there we actually I believe it's that we want to create another quotes here and we want to do S P E A K E R so this is who's speaking um, and do a colon and we will do C H A T M E S S A G E this is the stuff I had to write down because it doesn't autocomplete uh, get S P E A K E R. So this is actually going to say I'm getting the speaker and then we're going to do another parenthesis and I think it's another parenthesis after that and do token and colon. And I think did we just call it my token? Yep, my token. Uh, do my T-O-K-E-N dot actor. So that, I believe, and then a semicolon will do it. What is our error here? So we got two, two more, and then we have four closing. We shouldn't have any issues there. Let's go see if that's still there. Roll to message, parenthesis, and then inside of the parentheses we do speaker, chat message, get speaker, and that looks right. Token, my token, actor. Oh, actually, you know what? I think this is this isn't this one. This is actually the brace like that uh, delete maybe wait control Z oh yeah yeah okay so that was getting rid of that and then this one and then we have three but this one right here I think is another curly brace and this one's a curly brace. I think that's what I was missing. Although I keep forgetting that it will automatically, I think, yeah, that looks like it might work. All right, so let's go ahead, go to chat mode. Do we get an error? I, don't. I would be shocked if we didn't get an error. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, run you. 
Uncut promise. Role is not defined. Oh, it's my role, isn't it? Dang it. Yes, it is. So this is my role. And I think everything else should be good. All right, so let's clear this again. Let's go ahead and clear chat while we're at it. Why is this not showing me the... Can I do clear slash C-L-E-A-R? No. Why isn't this showing me the whole... Is it pushing it out? Oh, oh it is. Oh, that's not good. All right, so let's go ahead and clear the chat. I'm going to move this over just a tiny bit so we can still see that. We should, yep, we can still access it. All right, so we clear the chat. Let's go ahead and clear this and do that. There's our roll. So here you can see we rolled 2d20. We have plus 3, plus 17. We rolled a 13 and a 3. Uh, it keeps the 13. 13 plus 3 is 16, which is right. Hold on, I can't read this thing. That's That's not right, is it? 13, 16. Oh, oh, I forgot keep high. We're just rolling two here. I was going, that does not look right to me. <laughs> yes, it is not, because that's doing exactly what we told it to. We need to keep high. So KH. And now, when we do it, we roll our two. There we go. Wow, we rolled that 20. So we rolled a 20 and a 17. That's what I was looking for is one of them to be kind of dimmed out. So here we rolled a 20 and a 17. That one's dimmed out. So we keep the high 20 plus 3 is 23 plus 0. 0.17 is 2317. At this point, your, your GM, like if I were in here, uh, what they would do is, okay, you rolled 2317. They'd simply right click on you, say update combatant. And in initiative, they would do 23.17, an update, and then it will change it. Now, I'm still looking for how I would go about doing that manually uh, and making it so that this script will then check if Acra is in there. If Acra is in there, it will find them and actually do that. But I haven't got that part done. So we actually have, and this is probably going to go a bit longer because I want to also show you how to do your own chat card. So this is the fancy one where you can, you know, click it, minimize it, maximize it to see all your stuff. The difference between this and when you actually roll initiative, if we go in here and uh, clear the combat, which I can't see, <laughs> right there, if we clear the combat, if we, you know, uh, go into combat and we roll it here the difference is is uh, this one actually says acro rolls for initiative and then says the actual values and stuff so that's another thing i'm looking is how i actually add this additional text um but i haven't found that yet so let's go ahead and look at uh well we want the combat to be started here obviously uh but let's get rid of it so we don't well I guess it doesn't matter with our thing because it it doesn't care if there's any characters in there all right so let's quickly and hopefully this might go 35 minutes or so uh, but let's go ahead using the information that we get from our our roll data and stuff so if we run this we roll our dice I'm gonna just delete that for now because this is what I want right here because we want to access that data. All right, so if we come in here, oops, darn it. Hold on, I only want one of those, so it's, I didn't right click. All right, get rid of that and get rid of that. Boy, Hacker is rolling really good right now. So we want to look here and we want to see where our data is and we want to set values so we can actually make our own. So we're going to go ahead and say edit macro. And we're going to come down here and we're going to comment out the easy roll thing. So we're just going to do that. Oh, let's go ahead and just line it up so it looks nice. And then we're going to come here and say um, the not so easy 
output to chat. All right, so here we're going to have our not so easy output to chat. And what we'll end up doing uh, is, you know, you can comment out the whole chunk of code by using the multi-line comment or whatever you want. So first thing we want to do is actually get those two dice values, which we remember were right here under dice, under result, was it? No. Oh, under dice, under dice. I love that. Uh, then under... Wait, uh, dice, dice a zero. Dun, dun, dun. So there, here's our array. Dice zero was what we wanted. Then, uh, is it results after that? Yeah, results, because this will have two of them. There's our two die rolls. And then we have that one and that one. So this is this is some of the stuff that gets a little tricky on figuring out exactly what the value is, especially because you have like these dice, dice. You have, you know, well, like we did with combats, combats, and stuff like that. So it gets kind of a little tricky in that sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to get these two values, right? So we're going to say let, oops, L, let, and let's say roll one. I'm not sure if I like that because it's maybe we'll call it die one. Die one equals, and we're also going to have a let die two. Let die two equals, and here we want to say uh, my roll dot. And then it was under dice. It was the dice array at that point, because here's the my roll is this whole thing. Inside is the first dice. So we're going to say dice. Um, and that's an array, but there's only a zero value in there. So we'll do bracket zero bracket dot um, results array. R-E-S-U-L-T-S -E results. Uh, bracket zero bracket and we want the first whoops that's not a bracket uh, bracket <coughs> bracket zero bracket like that uh, dot uh, was it result r-e-s-u-l-t so this will set the value of the first die roll right uh, and then we want to do the exact same thing with the second one it's still going to be the, the zero array for dice, but it's going to be the result number one for results. And I think that's what we want there. Um, so the next thing we want to do is create our chat message, I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let me think real quick. Na, 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 na. Yeah, so we're going to create now our chat message. I don't know. Should we do another my here? Actually, no. This is this is a, a, a thing that already exists. So we don't have to do let on this. So it's called chat message. Uh, no, chat content. So chat content equals, and we are going to do our little tick, right like that. And I'm actually going to just stick the other one down here because we have a lot of info here that I want to do, and it's going to be using kind of HTML. So I'm going to maybe tab it in about that far just so we have a nice block, and it helps me know that this is associated with the chat content. So we're going to go ahead and do a P which is a paragraph, I believe, in, in HTML. And then I also want this first part to be big. So we're going to say H2. And we're going to close those out real quick just so we know that we're closing them out because you always want to close that HTML tag. So we're going to do H2 first because you, you do the first inside, last outside, and slash P. So that's how you close an HTML. 
Um, I think... I'm gonna need maybe four lines for this. Oh, I probably wanna stick a semicolon there too. Uh, but the others aren't gonna have the H tag. So we're just gonna do a P <coughs> and a close P. And I'm gonna copy that. Oops, control, I didn't copy that. I cut that, copy that, or pasted. And then a paste there. I'm going to do a paste there, and I think that's what we want. So in our H2 part, this is kind of our header, and here we're going to say uh, what the role is. We're just going to basically do maybe what the role formula is, right? Because that's kind of, well, I don't have the card anymore. <clears throat> that's kind of how it does it, but it doesn't say slash R. I don't, I don't know. I, I like that, but uh, let's go and do a dollar sign. And we saw up here really quickly that we can right off of our dice, uh, we can see our actual formula. So the roll formula, actually even not off a of dice, I think right here as well, or right down here. So we can go right off the main thing. We have formula right there. So we could do uh, our thing here and do my roll dot formula formula like so and technically we could well we couldn't run this yet because we don't actually have the thing that creates the chat message if we wanted to do that we would do chat uh, is it uppercase yes m e s s a g e message dot create and then we would do a parentheses and a bracket and do something like that and think yes we would want that with the semicolon so in here then we could say s p e a k e r speaker kind of like we did up above and uh, i think this is another curly brace like so uh, and uh, let's just put it down like that. We're going to do a comma because there's another thing after that. So let's do A L I A S alias. So this is who the speaker is. We're going to do my T O K E N dot actor like so. And we don't need because this is inside of a, a chunk of code. We don't actually need a semicolon there. And then the other thing would be our content, right? So down here, we would do uh, C-O-N-T-E-N-T, -E and then a colon, and then our actual content, which is our C-H-A-T, C-O-N-T-E-N-T, -E like that, I believe. And I think that would make it so now it would print out this and then print out a bunch of blank lines. We can check. There we go. So there's our command so far, the slash R. Because we're doing H to it, automatically adds this red line to bring attention to it. Uh, I'm not sure what the object object is. That might be where the name is supposed to be. Maybe I messed something up there. Uh, da -dun -dun. Alias my token dot actor. Is that right? Oh, my token dot name. Actor is not, we want the name. Let's see if that works. There we go. Acra. Perfect. So then we could have something down here say, Acra rolls initiative or something like that with advantage. <laughs> In fact, we, we could easily do that just by doing another P above that. Uh, let's see. Let's just take this right here real quick. Do a control C and maybe do that. Tab, 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 tab. V and we could say uh, string T O K E N. My, wait, is it my token? Yeah, my token dot name. I totally misspelled that. 
um, in our closey bracket. Roles for I N I T I A T I V E with A D V A N T A G E. So that should now say acro rolls with advantage. I don't know, maybe we don't want, I mean, this is who the box is about. Then generally it's that. If we do it this other way, what did it actually do? It says acra, acra rolls. Yeah, so that works. Rolls for initiative, rolls for initiative with advantage. Yeah. And then there's the formula. There's our formula. It has the slash R with the keep high and everything. I guess if you, uh, I guess you can't even grab that. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty good. Now let's go just do the other parts. So we want to actually just, because we can't do this really easily, where it shows this and then have the, um, actually didn't it do it? Did I not? Oh, no, because I clicked it inside the thing. <coughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. And let's finish. Oh my gosh, we're at 40 minutes. I apologize, but we're, we're just at the end of this thing. All we have to do is fill in these values and we're done. So let's go ahead and create a F uh, roll. Now uh, let's say first roll and then something like that. And then we could actually go grab our roll, which was, whoops, we need the string and then those like so, and this would be our, what did we call it, uh, die one. And let's actually make this value bold. So we'll just do a bold around it. Oh, whoops, I forgot the slash B, like so. So that'll make it the, the result bold. And we called it die one. I don't know why I didn't call it my die one. That just seems long. <laughs> die one. And if we take this and do a copy and paste it right here, uh, we could do die two and do maybe just so these are the same length, I'm going to do two ND and one ST. That way they're they're the same length. So first roll, second roll, and then we want to, of course, say the initiative. So I N I T I A T I V E. Did I spell that right? Initiative. Uh, and let's say initiative, and then maybe in parentheses. This is all whatever you want, and then inside here we're gonna do this. And we're going to say my roll dot R E S, not uppercase, R E S U L T. Is it result or results? Uh, da, 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 roll results. Uh, so result, which is this one. So this is result. So, and then maybe a space and because HTML will only allow you one space but I'd like to have more I'm gonna do an ampersand NBSP and a semicolon which is a code for another one which means it'll let me have another space so this is actually gonna do three spaces and then let's go ahead and put the final roll the total our new proper one we're gonna put that in bold and go ahead and close the bold there we go, go back in, and we're gonna do string uh, this, this, and do my roll dot, and we want this guy right here total, which is 16.17, uh, so we could say total. And there we go, I think that will do it with our own check card. So if we roll now, we get, here's our roll. First roll was a three, second roll was a seven. So the initiative would be the higher one. So it's seven plus three uh, plus 0.17, that gives us 
So that looks like it works. And at this point, the GM would go ahead and type in 10.17 there. I think that does it. We're at 45 minutes. Ouch. Um, I apologize for that, but uh, I just wanted to hurry and barrel through because I think we could do this. Um, I would really like to know what you guys would like to see in the upcoming episodes. Uh, I was thinking module spotlights could be something. We could go in more advanced. I mean, we, we were able to set up a very basic table, get it up and running where you can run stuff. Uh, we can go in more detail, say, with items and creating items and all the different types. We have weapons, equipment, consumables, all these different things. We can kind of go learn those things together because there's not a lot of documentation on them. Um, we'd talk more about the other type of actors. There's non-player character and a vehicle. Uh, so anyway, I'd really like to know what you guys would like to see in the upcoming episodes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And don't forget to tell other people about my channel. Come check it out. They like what they see. They can sub. Hey, no, no, uh, what is it? No win, no foul? That doesn't sound right. I don't know what the what the saying is but anyway win-win uh and that is it my friends until next time i'll be seeing you later bye